looks like there's no tomorrow. Welcome to the Big King Podcast. Okay, how? Welcome, everyone. I have Noodles here with me today. Noodles, welcome to my show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I had a couple of friends tell me that uh, this is your dream come true. Yes, 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 exactly. This it is, is my dream. <laughs> today, my dream come true. <laughs> um, first question, how did you get the name Noodles? Because uh, I used to watch American movie, which is called Once Upon a Time in America. Okay. The main character was called Noodles at that movie. That movie was very old. It was filmed in the 1980s. Uh-huh. I've never seen it. Yeah, this is a mafia movie. Okay. Kind of like a Godfather. Oh, and I like mafia movies. Yes. I've never seen it. I'm, yes. I like Casino, um, um, Godfather. I like those movies, but I don't think I've ever seen uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Okay, but that movie is super famous in China. It's on really? the top of the list. Yes. Why? Is it really good? Yeah, it's really good. Who's in it? Uh, Robert De Niro. Oh. I only know the one character that is that actor. I do like the, De Niro. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at that time, that was his like peak. He was like yes, yes. the best De Niro. Yes. After that, he kind of. Uh... Yes, it was a golden age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we're here to talk about um, Shanghai. Yeah. You are Shanghainese. Yeah, for sure. I'm and you've been here how many years now? I've been living here 40 years. 40, 40 years. Yeah, I'm 40 years old. <laughs> I am 37. So yeah, no. we've been here quite a bit. I've been yeah. here what? 10 years, almost 10 years. Yeah, Shanghai has been uh, changing a lot in the past 10 years. Yeah. A lot. But not so much when you were a kid. Yeah. T uh, yes, it is significant uh -huh. change. Uh, so I guess that's kind of what I want to talk about uh, today is mostly about how you see Shanghai's, I guess, biggest change. So let's start when you were a kid. Like, what was Shanghai like? And then we'll move towards more modern time. Good. It sounds like uh, Back to the Future, the yeah. movie. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the four decades ago when I was born in the okay. 1980s. And uh, I think the Shanghai used to be more primi uh, relative primitive compared to now. I sure. mean, the four decades ago. That's uh, a strange word to use, though. Primitive. Uh, I, I, I was think, exaggerating. I think, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you walk in down the street in the in the center of Shanghai, you very difficult to find a high skyscraper mm -hmm. at that moment. Yeah. Almost uh, no, 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 uh, full of the Shikumen building and the yeah. Long Tan at that moment. Yeah. Shanghai was like... Uh, Even around uh, People's Square? Yes. Uh -huh. But People's Square, you could find some um, modern building. Yeah. But I mean, the Jing'an distractor, mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, Changi distractor mm -hmm. were very old at that moment. And um, yeah, very old. And uh, uh, so since the 1978, I remember, if I make no mistake, the, since the reform and the opening up policy released, mm -hmm. uh, Shanghai started to change. Of course. And the government, in order to develop the city, they they, they were going to tear down all the buildings and build the new buildings, skyscraper, mm -hmm. from that moment. And the laugh was tough. I still remember I used the food coupon at that moment. Ah. Have you heard the food coupon before? Uh, we have those. We call them food stamps. Oh, food stamps, yeah. exactly the same, same thing. Same stuff, yeah. Yeah, no matter how rich you are at that moment, you couldn't buy food without uh -huh. uh, food coupon. Okay. But I only used the food coupon when I was a child. Mm -hmm. But my grandpa told me that they used the bicycle coupon, like a watch oh. coupon, everything needed a coupon. Yeah. Uh, at that moment, we called it uh, planned economy. Yeah, I, I've heard of the term. Yeah, life was very tough at that moment. Uh, meat was very expensive. If you're eating meat, mm -hmm. it was used to be considered as a very luxury. Yeah. And also eating out is very luxurious, uh -huh. considered extravagant right. eating out. So when you were a kid, did you eat out ever? Or no, never. Almost never. Oh, um, sometimes, you know, some my relatives or my 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 father's uh, co-workers, uh, if you hold there, have the wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. I went there and gotcha. it was like a festival, like yeah, a yeah. big feast. Uh -huh. I, I treated myself at that moment. I right. ate whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> I ate a lot <laughs> at that moment. Uh, but uh, when it comes to happiness, I think I was happier when I was a child in the 1980s. I was poor, mm -hmm. but I was very easy to satisfy myself. I, right. Yeah, I could buy candy or buy a snack or buy... And be really happy. Yeah, really happy. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, my father buy me, uh, bought me the first NES Nintendo. I played mm -hmm. The Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Even though I didn't understand the plot, I right. was very happy at that mm -hmm. moment. But now I could afford the PlayStation 5, Switch, Xbox, but I don't have... It. I don't feel happy and mm -hmm. also I don't have too much time to play uh, too many video games nowadays. Right. 
So, I mean, you're playing D and D. You're playing other stuff. Yes, yeah, more social. I used to be a diehard fan of the consoles game, but since I play board game with you guys, I think board game is more interesting because I, I'm able to communicate with you guys face to face. Yeah, it's very happy. It is. I think it's more human, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it's more human to enjoy this social stuff. Yes. A big thing that I've noticed in, I guess, my ten years here. Is that people, especially in Shanghai,、mm-hmm. have become less and less social? Exactly. I think the younger you generation can... is very unsocial. Exactly. You can say that again. Because、mm-hmm. uh, I used to have more friends than now. Yeah. Because、uh, since the we are getting、uh, getting older and older, more and more of my friends are getting married. That they have to take care of their family, their children, their parents. Maybe I can say there's a middle age crisis, right? Sure. But I'm a single guy. I、yeah. have more free time to hang out with guys. So I really appreciate Dan, you, Matt, yeah, and、uh, we could hang out with each other just like the day before yesterday. We、mm-hmm. went to play Switch at the cocktails. We had、oh, a lot、I、of heard, fun. I heard it was so much fun. Yeah, I'm very jealous.、Uh, that reminds me of childhood memory,、yeah. you know, because I played NES and、uh, Super NES with my neighbors at that、oh, moment. Oh, that's so much fun. Yes, yes. I had、um, I had the Super Nintendo as well, and then my cousin had the Sega Genesis. I don't、oh, know Genesis, if you know I that know. one. I know,、yeah. I know. I, I'm a big fan of、yeah. Sega. I know so, Sega Genesis. I had that one when I was a child. So we would always go over each other's houses, and we would all play. And I had, I have a big family. So like、uh, my cousins had the Sega. We had the Super Nintendo. Did you have a fight one, with your、uh, all the time? <laughs> which one's better, like Sega yeah, or the yeah, NES? Yeah. We yeah, all had that. Yeah. Yeah, I was fascinated with the three、uh, company story, like Sony.、Mm-hmm. Sega and Nintendo、yeah. because the, like three kingdom story. Right. I really, I really want you、yeah. really wanted the Sega to win the battle, but finally Sega failed the battle in the nineteen two thousand one. I remember、uh, the Dreamcast me, was the last yes, console of the Dreamcast. Sega. Yes, Dreamcast. But、yeah. to me, Sonic was never as cool as Mario, so I always liked、uh, Mario better. Depends because I think Mario is very good game, but、uh, I think Sonic is faster. Sonic、yes. is a very fast. Yeah. But、uh, the, so you、uh, like Sonic better. The character、uh, that, the, more than the game.、Uh, prefer、really? Sonic, but now I prefer Mario because the Mario is getting better. Like I played、uh, recently, like、uh, Mario Galaxy on the、yeah. Wii. It's it's, it's, really it's awesome. It's really. But、good. the new Sonic is not as good as the back to the Sega Genesis、I、generation.、Agree. The thing is that all of these games they take us back to a happier time. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I still enjoy two D games. For sure, I like I, I Mega still, Man. Yeah, yeah, I'll、Mega、play、Man. that forever. You know what? Yeah, I I downloaded so many Sega Genesis game and F. How do you say in China we call it F S F C, but in the in your country we call it S N E S. We download so、sure. many of the、uh, old school game.、Yeah. I'm still playing Dragon Quest V 3D <laughs> game. I'm tired of 3D game. Also, I have、yeah. the、uh, 3D dizzy problem. If I play FPS、mm-hmm. game, I will get dizzy immediately. Oh, so I prefer yes, but I that's why I'm not going to buy PlayStation Five. Yeah, I also download the old school game from my PlayStation Four, maybe Switch. Switch has the Super NES、uh, library. Yeah, I could download that game. Right, it's fantastic. But、yes. I think that y- what you're saying is important is that we always kind of go back to our childhood. Yeah, and we find a lot of happiness there. Exactly. Even though we have so much more cool stuff now. Yeah. Well, is that you? Yeah, this is my、oh. watch. Okay. <laughs> um,、no、and so you kind of going back to what you called maybe a more primitive Shanghai. Yes. Yes. Even though we live in a very modern yes, Shanghai. Yes. Why? Yes. Yes. But back to nineteen、uh, eighties, just like I mentioned before, Shanghai used to be more localized. Yeah. We spoke Shanghai dialect a lot.、Mm-hmm. We could see the Shanghai typical buildings like Shi Kuomen Building, like Long Tang. But、mm-hmm. now, I think our culture, our language, our buildings have been swallowed up by the modernization. Yeah.、Uh, does it? Is it good? Is it bad? How do you feel about it? Uh, for me, this is a kind of double-edged sword. Yes, of course. Every I think everything is. But go on. Yeah, since the I remember since when I was a child in nineteen eighties, the government in order to popularize the Mandarin at that moment, and、uh, we were not allowed to speak Shanghai dialect in school. School. Right. But my first language was Shanghai dialect because I never spoke、uh, Mandarin to my family. So, I when I went to the school, we started to speak Mandarin. And、uh, so, from my generation, almost no one can speak authentic Shanghai dialect. Yeah, they speak. We speak Pijin, Pijin Shanghai dialect. Okay. You know the ve- very interesting phenomenon is nowadays. You know, now I mean the twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. Now, if you go to the street, it's really difficult to find that the people speak Shanghai dialect in the street.、Uh-huh. 
And pure all, Shanghai dialect. Yeah, pure dialect. Yeah. F- only for older people. I think young generation, for my generation, they, if they talk to their family, they will speak Shanghai dialect. But if they go outside, for sure, they will speak Mandarin. Yeah. And uh, also the young generation, very like a teenage, they can speak, uh, they cannot speak Shanghai dialect. In most cases, mm-hmm. they cannot, but they can understand the Shanghai dialect. Right. But I reckon that the next, next, next generation, maybe they don't know, they don't understand the Shanghai dialect. At because, all. Yeah. It's going to be zero. I yes, think. yes. Yeah. They're being swallowed. It, it, not only does it happen in Shanghai, it happens in the whole, whole world, I Correct. think. Correct. I mean, I think it's important first for the listener to understand that Shanghai dialect is actually very different from Mandarin. Exactly. It is, it is almost like saying English and Spanish. Or exactly. English and Italian, exactly. like there's the same root, yes. but it's a completely different language. Yes, it's very difficult to understand if you only understand Mandarin. And yes. Shanghai is just back to the 1980s. The uh, people from the different prov- provinces had had a hard yeah. time communicating Correct. with each other, so that's why the uh, the Chinese government tried to popularize the Mandarin, which makes sense. Right, yes, it makes better yes, trade. Makes Everyone is yes. no longer isolated yes. in their by their language. Yes, that's why I said that this is a double edged sword. Correct. But now the younger generation, the Mandarin and the Shanghai dialect, are more identical because people use the nowadays people use the Mandarin thought, Mandarin pronunciation to speak Shanghai dialect. Correct. But I speak very very authentic Shanghai dialect. I think every Shanghai says that, and then they're like, uh, no, "Oh, mine is the most uh, authentic." <laughs> uh, I know the reason why I say that because I I learned the Shanghai dialect from my grandparents, not sure. my parents. My parents' Shanghai dialect is not authentic as uh, my grandparents. Okay. Also, th- uh, since ten years ago, my grandfather fell victim to stroke, mm-hmm. and the, his his eyes is not good. Sure, eyes are not good. So I I read the newspaper for him every day. He uh-huh. will automatically correct, correct my wrong pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> so my pronunciation I think is a relatively uh, authentic. So, authentic. Yeah. So many of my friends will consult me how to uh, read this, how to read that. Yeah. Now we can speak Shanghai dialect, my my generation, but they don't know how to mm-hmm. read the newspaper in Shanghai dialect. It's oh. very difficult because you read it. And then you have to kind of translate it into your head and then speak it out. Exactly. Also, yeah. the newspaper is a Mandarin thought, not yeah. the Shanghai dialect thought. Gotcha. We had we had own di- we had own characters before, but we uh-huh. we don't use it. It was a complicated character, traditional character, Chinese yeah. character. We use it. I'm a big fan of traditional Chinese. Really? I think tr- I I used to have an HTC phone that only oh. had traditional Chinese because it's a Taiwanese phone. Yeah, Taiwanese. And so and it's Hong a Taiwanese Chinese. company, so. They only had traditional characters, oh, and I, see. I enjoy looking at them. Okay, but now I use a uh, Ejia, I a One Plus. Yeah, well, I, know One the, Plus I know the One Plus form is. They, I don't think I don't know if it has a tr- tr- uh, traditional Chinese keyboard. But so, you can download the keyboard for yeah, sure, like Sogo. It's easy nah. to get the traditional Chinese. But, but I, I just give up on that. There's a very interesting phenomenon that you know. I think our generation never learned the traditional uh, traditional da- characters. Uh, characters. But my grandpa uh, only that. that. Yeah, before the CTP, the, in the Republic of China, they they used the uh, complicated uh, Chinese. Right. But now our generation, I think I can read the whole article with the whole. Traditional characters, oh, yeah? but if you it's separate, hard. yeah, no, not hard. But if you mm. separate, it's pretty separate. A single word, maybe one by one, maybe I couldn't that, understand. Ah, I got you. Because yeah. you can kind of tell, and yes. you know, you know the language. Correct? Yes, yes. But we never learned the traditional characters. Uh-huh. I started with traditional Chinese, and okay. then because when we were kids, we had to go to Chinese school, um, and so you would go, you would learn the traditional characters, and then slowly, I gave up on Chinese school because I had swimming. Oh, and it just okay. everything kept, you know, there was too much conflict between uh, swim swim team uh, competition and Chinese school. So I stopped. Yeah, time was limited, I think. Now, when you I think when you're a kid, it is important to get all of those fun things in. Yes. But yes. my parents always wanted me to at least keep your Chinese roots. Right. They were like, oh, you have to learn Chinese. Um, I learned like kung fu when I was a kid. Oh, really? And my sister learned calligraphy and Chinese oh. knots. So wow. she was. W- we tried to put as much Chinese culture in a place that had no Chinese culture, right? Because I yes. grew up with yes. a lot of Jewish and Italian friends. Oh, okay. And very few Chinese people in our in our town. Almost, almost none. It was like four or five. Did you did you like Chinese culture? I mean, compared to the no. It? When I was a kid, I didn't like it uh, oh, okay. because. It felt like more work. 
right? Oh, exactly. You have to go every Saturday. You have to go to Chinese school. You had homework in exactly. addition to school homework,、ah, and then just all of that was, was a big burden. <laughs> it was a huge burden on me. I regret、okay. it now, of course, because、yeah. you know after after coming to China, then I'm like, oh, I should have paid more attention. But I think you still lose it because I stopped going. And then I stopped learning. I didn't have the environment to always be speaking Chinese, to write Chinese, read and write. So you just lose it. Yeah. And then I come here,、it. and I was like lost, you know, <laughs> completely lost for my first two years here.、Uh, yeah, and slowly, you kind of have to build it back up, and it's hard, you know. I I was really worried my first two years that I wasn't gonna make it. <laughs> But、mm-hmm. now your Chinese is a、uh, super awesome. I, I think, think because of this. To be yes, honest, yes, like yes, a lot yes, of it's、yes. because of the podcast. Yes, exactly. You know? <laughs> yes. So,、uh, let's go back to Shanghainese culture. You、okay. think that it's kind of modernized and it's a double-edged sword. On one side, yes, we're kind of losing a little bit for more trade. On the other side, what what's the、uh, I guess bad side of it? Bad side and the good side. And the-、uh, I mean, I think you've already talked about a lot of the good. Yeah. Right. Bad side is you know the our young generation don't know our culture, don't know what is Shanghai dialect, don't know what is our. What do you think culture. Shanghai、uh, culture is? Uh, because different region for、uh, has a different culture. That's very common, right?、Mm-hmm. Our culture, you know, like nowadays, if we go have the Spring Festival, children would say, "I'm gonna eat a dumpling to celebrate." Uh, spring festival, but actually, Shanghainese never eat a dumpling.、Uh. We don't have this. There are no culture eat a dumpling. And also in the we have the Laba Festival. Do you、yeah. have you heard of that? Yeah. We we are going to cut、uh, cook the Laba、uh-huh. porridge. But Laba is eight kind of ingredients in the porridge. But、yeah. we actually we never cook、uh, Laba porridge. But sometimes we would argue with the children.、Uh-huh. They say that this is our traditional culture. But I said that、uh, uh, it depends. It is it is Chinese culture,、right. traditional culture, but not, not、uh, Chinese, Chinese culture.、Right. So during the、uh, Spring Festival, normally we would eat the called the Sishi Kao Fu. Okay. It is my I don't know. Food. Oh, kofu, I know. Yes,、okay. shikofu.、Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a、uh, bit sweet, I、yeah. think. And also, we would eat the、uh, how do you say that the pork pork with the bamboo, still the pork with bamboo. In Chinese, it's called the、uh, Sichuan cow roe. Ah, okay, I got you. Yeah, but that that's totally different nowadays. Why? Or how uh, is it different? Uh, different is a、uh, people you know like like I mentioned the Spring Festival. People don't play fireworks, don't、yeah. play firecrackers. Uh, we don't have the atmosphere of the Spring Festival.、Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I mean, when I first came to Shanghai,、yeah. fireworks still were active. You yeah, know, I, I remember every year it was very hard to fall asleep. Exactly. Because at three in the morning, someone's exactly, throwing off fireworks. It's just like our own dialect, the culture. Now, these young children,、uh, young generation, don't know what is firework, what is our culture, what is our dialect.、Yeah. They don't know. We also have our own opera, Shanghainese opera.、Mm. They don't know. But it, now it's. Only for older people nowadays, and also we had the stand-up comedy show, Chinese、yeah. stand-up comedy show. You know, with, it was a very interesting phenomenon. Nineteen eighties, if you go down the Huaihai Road, we didn't have supermarket. We didn't have the how do you say the、uh, shopping shopping mall. Only very small shops. Yeah, one by one, one by、yeah. one. If you listen to the、uh, stand-up comedy show, you can you could from the first store. To the last store you could listen. You don't need to stop by. Just、uh, go walk, and every store plays the play the stand up comedy show. That's funny. Yeah, it、That's、was、cool. very funny. But it it never happened.、Mm-hmm. I think the language and the culture associated with the economic、yeah. economy because Shanghai used to be the economic engine for the whole China.、Mm-hmm. It still is. Uh, still not not that powerful. They say that Shanghai contributed almost uh almost twenty percent of the GDP to the whole China back to four decades ago,、wow. five decades ago. Okay, now where is it? No, I don't know. I didn't. I I don't、uh, see the <laughs> statistics.、Uh, still, I think Shanghai is an important、um, economic hub in yeah, China. Yes, it has to be. Yes. Right. But when I got here, I always assumed that Shanghai was、uh, the culture of Shanghai is really just money. To me, it's、yes. always been that. Yes. But now Shanghai is, I think, the provider service for the elite and the rich people, not for the local people.、Mm, to、If、me, you, that's still money. Yes,、right? do money. Yes, money can talk. If you don't, if you are not rich enough, even though you are local people, you are in the center of Shanghai, you、yeah. have to move to the suburban area, the rural area. Yeah, it's very cutthroat the society. <laughs> to me, that's always been Shanghai's culture. Yes, and、I'm, it's very difficult to define culture, right?、Yes. I think a lot of people say, "Oh, it's the food, it's the language, it's the art, yeah,、uh, it's the 
um, I guess, look, architecture. Yeah, our culture is shrinking. The reason is shrinking is because it, that's why I mentioned it before. Shanghai used to be more localized. Mm. And then now, you know, I, I think that all the cities are very identical. It's getting more and more identical. Yep. Because, you know, back to four decades, if you went to Suzhou, went to Hangzhou, went to Shanghai, went to Beijing, mm -hmm. you could tell the difference. Yep. But now it's very identical. The, plan, the same design of the skyscrapers. Yep. So no difference. Mm -hmm. That bothered me too. I think when I got here, it wasn't so obvious. I think a lot of the smaller cities copied Shanghai. Yeah, right. Yes, like exactly. a lot of the smaller cities started having their own Nanjing Road. Yes, you know, yes. it looks almost identical. Yes, yes. Same brands, and then everyone started having like their own section that had like yes. a bund type. No thing. creation, just right. that are very identical. Just very identical, and so it becomes very difficult to see how different some cities are. But yes. I think that's changing again. Yeah. Like now, I think each city wants their own like couple of special buildings yes and Mitchell. so it's starting to uh come apart again i think it came together because yeah. they didn't know what to build yes and now there are mm, i would say chinese architects that are like no i think i have this new idea and yes. they're starting to yes. become more different again exactly yeah. exactly we have a chinese oldest in the called the san shi nian feng shui which i mean uh -huh. yeah same it changes all the mm -hmm. time but i think that shanghai culture is very difficult to grasp because a lot of the Shanghainese are either leaving or, you know, not passing on the culture that they know, right? Yeah, I think yes. the parents are not teaching their kids about Shanghai culture, yes. which means that slowly it just dies because culture... Yes. Shanghai culture is go, for sure is going to go extinct, for sure. Right, because I don't think culture is food, art, architecture, uh, music. Culture, yes, the culture is the living habit. I think it's habit. the people. Yes, yeah. it also... Because I think the Shanghai culture is related to our older building, Shikuman, because we had that oh. atmosphere. We had a very good relationship with our Your neighbors. neighbors. Yeah, with, because mm. one Shikuman building could live in more than 10 families. Yeah. And the door, doors were open. Mm -hmm. We don't care. We, I did the homework at my neighbor home, a neighbor's yeah. home all the time. It doesn't care. I could eat a dinner at their home if my parents were overworking. Yeah. But now it, I don't even know my neighbors. But <laughs> since this Shanghai mm. lockdown, yeah, I knew so many of my neighbors. Oh, I feel, yeah, yeah, I, 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 it's kind of a rendezvous. Mm -hmm. It's kind of back to the when I was a child in the Shukuma. Yeah. Yes, we play the badminton nowadays. We eat it together mm -hmm. with my neighbors. It's a good feeling, so good. But yeah. before lockdown, we don't know any of my neighbors. Just close the door uh -huh. when I'm back home. So you think that's interesting because what you said right there, the architecture affects how people interact with each other yes because back uh, to yeah that makes sense four decades we share the toilets we share the bath uh, catching yeah they share the bath we, we don't have the bath we have the public bath yeah. outside and sometimes if a hot summer day you could uh, use the tap water to mm -hmm. bath in, in nice. the in the long time yeah yeah at that moment so we had a closer relationship mm -hmm. i think the relationship with the neighbors is much better than the relatives because we we saw each other oh. every day that is true. And that makes the, you sense. know, we, we were talking about the, the AC before, yeah. right? The, the Chongqing didn't have yeah. AC, right? Chongqing, yeah. The back two, three decades of Shanghai didn't have AC because AC was super expensive at yeah. that moment. You know, on every summer, on every summer at the night, the people went out to enjoy the cool. Yeah. They move out of their uh, chairs, the tables, they play chess, they play yeah. poker game, they play the board game. Yeah. You know, the, the one of my favorite board game was a. Uh, uh, army chess. Have you heard army chess? Jing Chi before. Four mm. countries fight against no, each other. I don't know this I one. It was the most popular yeah. game back to <laughs> 1980s. It was very good memory. That's cool. Yeah, it was a very uh, significant, uh, a very, very big spectacle at that moment. The, almost all the Shanghainese went outside and sit uh -huh. outside. Have you heard of the Chen Feng Liang? No. The phrase? Chen Feng Liang. Because we. Ah, that makes sense though. Right, everyone yeah. goes outside and yes, enjoy the, the cool. Right, enjoy yeah. the cool. I got you. No matter the Huai Road or uh -huh. Nanjing Road, the people just move their chairs. It's allowed, but now the I think the city city management, the regulation is not allowed. You go outside to do that thing. Right, and also that why did I say that I was happier in the 1980s because the Shanghai was more flexible. We had the, we don't have such a strict re regulations mm -hmm. like nowadays. Yeah, the people could do the. A street vendor business. We had mm -hmm. so many food street like Huanghe yes. Road, Zhap Road, and the seafood street. Uh, me and my friends just went to the food street and we we drank, we 
eat the seafood, eat yeah. the barbecue other side. I, I, we were really enjoying the outside our booth, not yeah. inside. The, also the food, because the food was not very good, but the atmosphere was super good. Mm -hmm. The feeling is so different nowadays eating. It's funny because I agree with everything that you said. I think that people need communities. Yeah. And the way that everything is structured now, everyone is just single home, single home. Sing There's yeah. no community. Yeah, but no. you find, and I find, that we are happiest when we go to places like Cactus. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a new community. Yeah, exa right? exactly. We can all go to this one place where we know where all of our friends are going to be and yeah. play this one thing that we all like. Yes, exactly. And I think that's so important. And a lot of cities don't have that anywhere. Like yeah. a lot of big cities are missing that yes, because all of these just like people some, yeah. are just sitting there at home alone playing yeah. on their phone. Yes. Uh, just like some um, experts told me that they are going uh, they are going to move to other city because of Shanghai lockdown. That they are worried that they cannot find a, such a community as Cactus yeah. to play mm -hmm. play board, board games. games. Yeah. But Shanghai is like a more more foreign friendly, right? If you move to the other cities in the it's China, tough. it's difficult to find the yeah. <laughs> foreign board game group, mm -hmm. right? I agree. Yeah. I mean, I went to Chongqing to play Magic. Okay. And the Magic store is really nice, but I found that it was very difficult to find English language Magic cards. Okay. It you makes know? sense. Yeah. I they only they had the Chinese ones, but I wanted to buy like a couple packs to kind of support the the store. And they were like, we don't have any English ones. And I was oh, like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Then I'll buy like maybe some of the card sleeves. I'll pay some, I'll do something to support. But they didn't have the English ones. And I was like, oh, oh. so if I live here, finding the English language ones, I have to either go on Taobao, I have to go on somewhere else to actually find the cards that I need. Yeah. It's different. Yes. You know, Shanghai is very, very expat friendly. Yes, exactly. So, uh, also, I when it, when it comes to retail store and back to the three decades, so I could mm -hmm. buy all my consoles and the games in the retail store. Yeah. But now, no, 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 any single retail store yeah. in Shanghai. Maybe one or two, but not very common nowadays. <sighs> right. We, we we buy everything online. on Taobao. Yeah, everything online. So I think the online shopping changed also changed a lot of life. Do you think that that's a good thing though? Because yeah. I remember coming here. And I couldn't find a good broom. Just Saudi. I, 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 I couldn't find a good one. Yeah. I had, because the only place I could go was the supermarket. And the supermarket one just, it always broke. Yes, because people, everybody can touch it. Yeah. And so I was like, it was terrible. Like, I just, my first year here, I just assumed that all things that I bought were going to break. But then I got Taobao. And yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. I could buy a really nice yeah. broom. And yes. I was like, this is awesome. Yes. Why would I go to the supermarket exactly. and buy the one that everyone's kind of like messing with? Yes. If yes. I can just buy like a nice one on top of. Yes. I love it. Like to me, I understand. I still love going offline shopping. I think offline shopping is a lot of fun. Yeah, we can just like if I, I'm, I'm going to buy shoes or clothes, I, I will definitely go to the retail store. Right. To shopping. try it on. To try it on. Yes. But I won't buy it there. I'll try it on in the store and oh, then I'll yeah. go online and buy the, yes, yes. the one online. Yes, this is, I think, everybody thinks this is a, we get a benefit from buying articles from Taobao, but actually I think this is not good for our economy. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because it's only benefits from the online business, but it, it, it it's going to be destroying the offline business, for sure, retail business. Because Which offline business? For example. The small ones. Uh, no. Okay. All the offline, almost the influence, all the. Because back to that, back to ten years ago, we didn't have the WeChat Pay, we didn't have Alipay, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't do too much uh, online shopping. We had to buy everything the retail stores, right? Correct. But now, if you go to the shopping mall, you can see that the shopping mall is quite empty nowadays. People could buy everything, as long as you are not eating. Yeah. You could buy everything yeah. online. Also, if you want to eat, you can eat a delivery food. Sure. Online. Mm. So I, I'm a kind of uh, agent working in the shopping mall. I try to find the customers to rent an empty shops. Right. But now it's it was super difficult. I'm, my job is very, very difficult to do. Yeah. But back to 10 years ago, I earned a lot of money because yeah. it was very easy because customers came to me and gave me money and noodles, can you find me a good shop yeah. and a nice price, good position? Yeah. And now no. No one wants to do the retail business. And more, more and more people are getting unemployed, I think, uh, because the 
yeah, the people, I think they buy everything online, but at the same time, people have to suffer the employment. Noodles, I really want to talk about this, hmm? but I also think that that's different from the topic that we want to go down. Okay, but I okay. want to talk about okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I think it's because a lot of these shop owners have not modernized. And I think that's a big problem. Um, I have I have a friend that told me he is opening a new gym, a small gym. And I was like, okay, uh, what's your plan? And he said, well, I'm going to have two sales. Uh, the sales are also going to be the trainers. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so do your sales and trainers have any social media presence? A little bit. Uh, how many fans do they have on like Xiaohong Shu? Uh, a couple hundred. That's nothing. You, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Then you, they, they, they have zero social media. Oh, yes. How many friends do they have on WeChat? Oh, a couple. If you have to open anything online, you need, or offline, you need someone that does online. Yes. And I think if you have a couple of investors that are very popular online, then you can be successful. Yeah. But if you don't, then you are going using the 1980s model in 2022 no like that makes no, no sense no sense. and i think a lot of the shop owners that try to go to malls are still using the old way of yes. thinking yes. they're saying oh there's foot traffic they will come in and that doesn't work like you have to no. figure out how to do your social media bring those social media people offline into your store yes and then they can buy online or offline yes but i think that a lot of these shop owners are still saying oh this mall has a lot of foot traffic because they have, you know, Starbucks, they have food, they have good, uh, no I guess. Way. And that doesn't work anymore. No. So they're not thinking in a modern way. And yeah. that's kind of their problem. Yeah, their problem. Yeah. They have to change, I think. Right. Just like I used to be a real estate agent. I also mm -hmm. run my own company. You know, I used to be a real estate agent two decades ago. Mm -hmm. At that moment, we used the older way to... Find the customers like so call 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 and knock the door yeah. knock on the door oh. to find the do you sell your house yeah. do you want to buy a house or the yeah. call 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 and they put the advertisement on the newspaper yeah. at the moment, but uh, since the ten years ago the method has changed we got almost eighty percent of the customers from the internet mm -hmm. online yeah. but of now I, I I I'm not doing the real estate but they are doing Douyin yeah. yeah I've seen like a couple the of those Shu, they yeah. posted the advertisement I think it's that, important yeah very important yeah. They can film the 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 the, the whole house, of the house yeah. and introduce and make some funny story, mm -hmm. make some plot, yeah. yeah, to attract the customers. I think that's so important. I think yeah, very that, important. I think that's way better. That's a way better way of doing things yes. than just calling, 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 calling. Yes, that's, that sucks. That's yeah, that's irritate, a shitty job. It's irritating. Yeah, you know, I got a phone call. Hi, uh, you want to buy something? Buy something. I just uh, hang up hang my up. phone immediately. Like, hang immediately. Up. Yeah, I really hate. It's so annoying. Yes. Um, but to me, like, that's part. That's also part of Shanghai. It's part of what I hated about Shanghai when I first got <laughs> yeah. here, because I was like, "How did you even get my number? Why are all these people selling me things?" Yeah. I remember it was always gym membership, and do you want to sell your house? Like yes, every yeah. week, I would get two or three. Yes, of they those. have the list, I think, because yeah. when I was run a uh, agency company, I also bought the list from mm -hmm. the. Of course. Yeah, maybe yeah. the five thousand Kwai. Remember the new building list the the shop owner, uh, the, the owner, the landlord's yep. phone number. And I will call every call, single call, phone call, number. Call, call. Do, you, yeah. do you want to sell your house? Do you want to sell your apartment? Do you want to rent out the yep. apartment? Yeah. It sucks. But that's, to me, that was part of Shanghai culture. Yeah. To me, it was right when I got here, I was very aware that Shanghai was very money oriented. Yes. And that that's what bothered me, to be honest, because New York is like that. And yes. I didn't, I don't like New York for that either. Yeah. But I think New York, to some extent, has, I mean, it's lost a lot of its culture, but it's also kept good pockets of culture as well. Okay. Until, you know, pandemic, I think we lost a lot of culture. Uh, you, you, because you lose a lot of shops that maybe didn't make a lot of money, but they were culture, I guess, centrals, central hub. Right. Um, like maybe a bar that a lot of people go to. They don't spend a lot of money, but it's kind of like our cactus. Yeah. Like if cactus, please don't. But if cactus, you know, ever goes down and closes, that's a huge culture hub. Yeah. That I think Shanghai would lose.
Yeah. You know, and you need those places where people go and hang out. Exactly. And I, I know those places don't make a lot of money, but no, those no, places no. are important to the people. Yes, very important. And when you start losing those spots, that's when a, a city's culture kind of just yes. goes down. Yes, it's exactly. You know, each time I go to Cactus, I feel like, like that the Cactus is my home. Yeah. I could do ev- I, I was very relaxed in, at the Cactus. Mm-hmm. I drink and play board game, talk to my friends. Yeah. And uh, they provide a very good environment. The best yeah. environment ever, I yeah. think. In Shanghai, it's yeah. one of my favorite places. Yes, because if you go to the other restaurant, if you play board game there, they are not they allowed kick to you out. Yeah, kick you out. Yeah. <laughs> but Cactus provide a very big table mm-hmm. for the board game. Good lights. Yeah. And, and then everyone's just happy there. Yes. And that's what I kind of love about each individual kind of hub, right? Yes. I We have a lot of places in Shanghai that do rock climbing. Yes. And yes, my favorite rock, rock climbing places they might not have the best rock wall, okay? They have, you know, they have their place, but they have a good area where it's just us. We can sit in like beanbag chairs and just socialize. We can order Wai Mai. We can just hang out. I understand. They're just enjoying the moment. Yeah. The moment. And just being there, cheering for your friends. And if you want to rest, we can go and just hang out here for a little bit. But I think our ex best group, have been sh- have been shrinking because of, of the course. lockdown. Of course. Yes, I feel a little bit sad. Me too. Yes, also that you know that I I made a lot of foreign friends in the past few years since I can speak English. Yeah. I, but I realized that the, the downside of making foreign friends is people are leaving. Yeah. I feel so sad. Yeah. You really, know, it's really the sad. reverse for me, right? Um, <laughs> I realized that my expat friends were leaving a long time ago, and so I made a lot more local friends. Yes. And then you made a lot more expat friends and yes. then you're yes. figuring out my problem right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I feel like Shanghai is always like that. Like Shanghai for me has always been you lose one or two friends every year. You yeah. automatically you yes. lose two. Yes. Because every year someone leaves and yes, you're like actually this that. year we have the significant losing. This year I this lost year. like 10 or 15. Yeah, me too. You know, me way too. more than two. Yes. Like I'm accustomed to two friends. Yeah. 15 is a lot. Yes, it's yes, a big, yes. It's a big change. Yes, I saw so many of my friends off this year because they helped me a lot in the past few years to help me to improve my English, mm-hmm. to play uh, D&D, etc., etc. Noodles, I'm going to tell you something personal then. Um, it always bothered me that when my Chinese friends must speak English with me. It's funny. I'm so sorry. It, no, it's okay. Um <laughs> It's very hypocritical of me because when I started learning Chinese, I forced myself to speak Chinese to my friends. And my Chinese was terrible then. And they all had to deal with it. I was like, no, I'm not speaking English to you. I'm going to try to speak Chinese to you. And my friends (laughs) hated it. And now I hate it when my Chinese friends only speak English to me. I'm like, why are you doing this? (laughs) <laughs> it's so much easier just to speak Chinese to me. You can, I can understand you so much better. And now I understand my old friends, their, their annoyance with me. Oh, because okay. they're like, why are you doing this? We can just speak English. This conversation will be much smoother <laughs> in English. And then when my Chinese friends do that to me, I'm like, please don't do this. Like, I, and I hated it. But I realized why. A part of it is I find that some of my Chinese friends just want to show off and that's what annoys me it's you are actually fine because you're doing it to train to get yeah. better yes but some of my chinese friends just want to show off oh, really? and that's what bothers me okay you know they just want to show off that they know english <laughs> and then i'm like why are you doing this it's not even very good like just let's just be you know chinese what? and be fine you know what? Uh, do you know chen a chinese guy chen in we play ball again chen, yes yeah chen I, I even talk to him in all the time in English. Does he no. hate it? He has to hate it. No. He, he, no? He's okay he with it? He's, he doesn't. Because he is a kind of my English teacher. Because four uh-huh. years ago, my English was very bad. I, okay. I remember f- first time I went to the board game party. Yeah. I couldn't understand. I couldn't follow anything uh-huh. you are talking about. And the Chen just the director translated everything for me. Oh, that's so nice. Such, such a good friend to have. Yes. Yeah. Very good friend. So we've got used to speaking to each other in English. Uh-huh. But I, I barely, sp- I, actually, I never speak Chinese in the cocktails. <laughs> so sometimes when Chinese come to uh, cocktails, ask me how to play this noodle. Could you, could you please tell me? And I will hesitate to, to speak Chinese. I have to think twice how to speak Chinese to explain the, explain really? the rules. Yes, like 
like chameleon wants wants to learn chameleon you know the girl right yeah. the egyptian girl he want, who wants to learn chinese one time we played the uh, katan we used the chinese version yeah. to play katan it was so weird <laughs> the english is very smooth like uh, give me a ship give me mm -hmm. a wood give me a yeah <laughs> or in chinese uh, give me a uh, kuang uh, give me a yang. Yang, I don't, I don't think I that's give wrong. Quite yeah, but we feel we both feel so weird to play a game, a board game in that way. Uh, so weird because we got used to speak English at that yeah. moment. That's interesting. I guess yeah. I guess certain things I do understand them better in certain languages. But I'm trying very hard to understand jujitsu, archery, you know, all of these things. I'm trying to understand them better in both languages. So oh, like I see. for rock climbing, uh, 手点, 脚点, and then oh that's a handhold, foot toe hold. Uh, it's it's different language, but I try to speak both as much as possible. Ah, I see. And it just, helps me understand the other players better. Yes, just like board game. Sometimes I don't know how to translate the, the English turn to Chinese turn yeah. the board game because it's very diff it's different very but it's different. good to understand it both ways I yes think. yes yes you know um because i remember in rock climbing i would used to mix up um i would say it's hand hold in english right but it's show dian and i didn't know it was called show dian in chinese and i would call it uh nigga ba because ba is yes. like a hold yes it's, it's, it's a, but it's not it's it's actually show dian and Shoji so everyone would be like, why are you calling it a ba? And I'd be like, I don't know, handhold. Yeah, but right. If I'm going to do the rock climbing, I would say the show ba as well because I'm not professional right. at the rock climbing. So I, it's good to special. understand both. Yes, yes. You know, yes. understand the lingo for both. Yes, and then, yes, oh, yes. Then you sound good yeah. in both languages. It's much better. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think I will talk more Chinese to you next time. <laughs> I think it's I think it's super important to understand something in two languages. Yes, because it exactly. also makes you think about things differently. Yes, yes. See, the reason I'm, I'm learning English very hard is I can understand the, everything by English. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting. It gave me a lot of uh, how do you say that sense of achievement. Yeah, of course. You know, when I was a child, I, I I mentioned before I, I used to be a big fan of the video game. But yeah. I, at that moment, the video game either has the English version or Chinese, uh, Japanese version. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the Chinese version. Yeah. So I promised my, myself that I have to master English one day. Oh. Now I replayed so many old school games like Metal Gear Solid, yeah. the Final Fantasy, yeah. and the Dragon Quest. I could, could, I could every, I could understand everything. <laughs> the feeling is so good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, those games nowadays have the Chinese version. Yeah. <laughs> but it's better. It's almost better to play it in its original language sometimes. Yes. I think. Yes. Yes. The you translation know? is not very correct sometimes. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that o learned Japanese only from playing video games. Oh, really? Yeah. And just really <laughs> a lot of Japanese video games and yeah. a lot of Japanese uh, anime. Anime. And they manga. just... Manga. Yeah. And then they're they're great at Japanese. And I think that's amazing. Yes. Right, you know? It's like, interest, I think interest is the best teacher for language learning. Yeah. I agree. Um, I think it's dating. Dating? <laughs> I 100% think it's dating. If you don't date someone who speaks that language yeah that it's real i think it's a little bit harder but yes. once you date someone who only speaks that language yes and you have to argue in that language <laughs> yes it's impossible so, like you have to get good so fast yes so uh, when it comes to dating you know one thing i really want to talk about the difference about the back to the uh four decades ago three decades mm. and nowadays nowadays do you know the marriage date is very very a uh, marriage rate, rate is, very, is very low very low yes because marriage is very expensive in Shanghai, especially Shanghai. Yeah. Have you heard that we have the biggest mother-in-laws in the whole world? Oh, yes. I've heard that. It's, it's yeah, incredible. They ask, they ask you to have, if you want to marry my daughter, you need to buy property in yeah. Shanghai, down area. You need to buy yep. car. You need to have mm -hmm. Shanghai license plate. Mm -hmm. You need to pay the bride price. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's to ridiculous. me, it's ridiculous. It's super ridiculous. You know, yeah. the many amount of the property could be cost you like 5 million RMB in Shanghai. Yeah. It's yeah, ridiculous. Do you and know Shanghai why? license place is also very yeah. difficult to get. Like, you know, it's not very expensive, like maybe 90,000 RMB, mm -hmm. but you, to, you have to bid an auction every yeah. month to get it. Yeah, I have a friend that does that. Uh, that's his job, just uh, to go help them. Pay yes, it's yes, 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 yes. But each time you only have 4%, around 4% of chance correct. to get the license plate. Um, but I understand it. 
right? From the mother-in-law's perspective, they always want their children to have a better life than that. Exactly. And so they're very picky about, and they only understand money to me. Yes. Like, I understand that my mom and my dad understand things from a very money base because they were poor once. So they think of everything by price, yes. or like a lot of things. Have you heard of uh, the People Square? We have the yes. matchmaker. Yes, I've corner. been there. It's cool. It's wild. <laughs> yes, it's crazy. It is a part of Shanghai culture. Yeah, very. Uh, yeah, I'm, right? I'm surprised it's still there. But yeah. yes, what bothers me is that they don't think in maybe they don't understand non-money terms anymore. Yeah. Like. I try to explain to my mother that I'm successful because I'm happy and they don't understand it. Like they really don't understand the, the concept of maybe not being rich, but being happy. Yeah. Like, I think that just completely goes over my mom's head, but they understand that if you make X amount of money, you're happy. And yeah. I don't think they understand that. That's not true. Yeah, people always think that you now there's a peop uh, money is associated with the happiness, but I don't think. Just like I mentioned think, be yeah. before, I was happier when I was child. I was poor. Exactly. I couldn't afford maybe a, a new game, mm -hmm. but I was happier. Yeah. I don't think they understand that. Like I, no. I find a lot more people, especially in Shanghai, don't understand that. No. You know, uh, I asked my friend. I was like, "Hey, what are your interests?" She was like, "Make money." I was like, yes, yes. Good luck with that. Like that's yes. a that's a terrible interest. Yes, in the hustle. And, uh, we have a Chinese term with which is called the uh, Nei Yeah. Very competitive now. Yeah. The people now this the young generation use their health, use their time to yeah. exchange the money. Mm -hmm. But when they get old, I think they have to use the uh, use the their money to change everything, to change their health. Correct. You, I, I used to run a uh, agency company back to eleven years ago. Mm -hmm the real estate agent company. And I was working around the 15 hours per day. Yeah. And I went to do the examination, physical examination. The doctor told me that you have the high blood, blood pressure. pressure. Yeah. You have the high cholesterol at that mm -hmm. moment. And I was shocked. I was young, I was 20s. How could that, how yeah. could that be? And the, after that, I shut down my agency company. I went to play badminton. Yeah. Then now I went, I go to do the exam, uh, physical animation. Everything is okay. Everything is normal. Good. Nothing That's special. So I feel that the health is above everything. Mm -hmm. It's above money for sure. Yeah. Happiness is above money. Yeah. Because you don't need that much money to be happy. No. I really don't think you need it. You need no. a little bit of, you yes. need money. Yes. But you don't need as much as everyone thinks. Yes. Just My like, happiest times are yes. at Cactus. Yes. At the Jiu Jitsu gym. That's yes. almost free. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. For me, you know, I, I like playing badminton. I like playing board game with you guys. Yeah. It helped me feel good. Uh, release feel good chemical dopamine yeah. when I do that mm -hmm. but money don't yeah I don't understand like I don't think that people understand how annoying that yes. is yes uh, you said about Nadrin, Um but I also see now that a lot of people are understanding like Tang Ping yeah. lie flat like yes. Tang Ping Bai yes. Lan lay, lay, back, lay back yeah I understand this feeling yeah because so many people think that making money is the most important thing. Yes. And then some people are slowly realizing it's not that important. Yes. And now there's this yeah. movement of, you, you know, you, now John, our, our generation or younger generation, they're only going to buy property in the customer mm -hmm. apartment city like Shanghai. Yeah. But they have to pay their whole lifetime to make a one apartment. Maybe. Yeah. For what? Like, I don't understand yes. why they would do it. Yes. Just give up. Yes. Do something I else. I don't understand. Yeah. When they get old, they have a property. Mm -hmm. So what? So what? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It bothers me. And yes, it, that's what also worries me when it comes to Shanghai culture. I'm yes. like, everyone is so pushing to be, to be just as rich as possible. Yes. There's always yes. someone richer than you. Yes. yes. Like that's a never ending, yes. you know, battle. Yes. If you walk down the street, you, you, you will realize that the people are in hurry and the people have unhappy faces these Bingo. days. Mm -hmm. It's not just these days. That's, that's something that I've noticed. At least in the last 10 years, I see very few happy Shanghainese people. Yes. Shanghai in general is not a happy city. Just no. like New York's not a happy city. No. Everyone's got the mean face on. I got to go. I got to make money. <laughs> exactly. Always. Yes. I remember it because I went to Taipei and I used to go to Taipei uh, every once in a while. And Taipei is so much happier. 
Yeah. Just you go and there's all smiles, a lot more smiles. The pace then, of life was yeah. slower. And then I come back here and I remember the <laughs> the second I walk into Pudong Jisang, <laughs> nobody's happy. Everyone's yeah. just yeah. like, go, yeah. go, 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 run, 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 I, run, run. I remember run. I went to Hong Kong 10 years ago. Yeah. And I remember Hong Kong was also like a kind of Shanghai. Yeah. People were unhappy mm -hmm. in the street and the people were in rush. Yeah. But you know, I, I used to work in the Quinshan, yeah. Quinshan not far away from Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the the happiness, they have they are happier than us because the housing prices were lower. Yeah. They don't need to suffer the big crowds. They don't need to suffer the heavy traffic. Mm -hmm. And life, the pace of life is slower in the Quinshan city. Yeah. I think it's happier in a lot of other cities. Yeah. Like Also, the other thing is, um, you know, in order to, like I said, that we have the biggest mother-in-laws these days. Yeah. And the, you know, some male parents, the men's parents, uh -huh. in order to give their children down payment of the uh, property, by the property in Shanghai, downtown yeah. area, they sell out their old apartment in Shanghai. Yeah. They move to the Jiangsu province, like mm -hmm. Huachao or Zhejiang province, like Jiaxing, because housing price is, is cheaper. The rest of money will go to their children's down payment. Down payment. Yeah. Down, pay down payment. This is, it's, it's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal, but maybe that makes them happier. Like if they move somewhere smaller, somewhere quieter, somewhere yeah, yes, easier, yes, that might actually make them happier. Uh, that depends because they were far away from they will be far away from their friends and mm -hmm. uh, relatives. Gotcha. They have to make new friends, maybe. But maybe that's a good thing, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it depends because the medical facilities, the everything is not convenient for the mm -hmm. older people at that uh, yeah. you know, countryside. Mm -hmm. If you know the sudden disease is very. Uh, very common nowadays in the, yeah. for the older people. Also for the young people, because people are unhappy, people are stressed out. I agree. I never heard that a sudden di uh, disease happened in the young children, uh, young people back two, three decades ago. But mm -hmm. now it's common. People are overworking, people are stressed out from their work, like yeah. a heart attack, cardiovascular mm -hmm. disease. It's yeah. common. I understand. In our, in our age, in our. And I'm generation. nervous for people. Like yeah. I always tell my, 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 all of my coworkers ask me, Arthur, why do you work out so much? So I don't all of a sudden die. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you guys eat why my every day. Yes. You guys don't work out. No. You guys are only just going out to eat every day. Like that cannot be healthy. No. You have all this stress at work. Yes. And you think that eating huoguo is going to help you? Maybe a little bit. Uh, yeah. Huoguo gives you a little bit of dopamine maybe. Yes, 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 a little bit. But I'm telling you, being healthy and working out so much more valuable. Yes, we and, get a benefits. Yeah, we get a bunch of happiness and health. Yeah, from working out. I don't understand. They just think that I'm crazy and yeah. I'm doing all of this for nothing. No, it's healthy. They just they don't understand. And I think that because China's never had a real like workout culture, you know, no, no. in in America you wake up. Uh, in middle school and a lot of people have their sport already done oh, okay. you know a lot of people go to school and they play soccer and they're on the soccer team you go basketball you're on the basketball team and that's part of your life every day okay but in in china yeah. my people friends are getting are not. more and more lazy you know back to four decades or three decades so people you know the most popular public transportation was i think the protection was a bicycle people yeah. had to ride a bicycle to everywhere but yeah. now we have the scooter we have the subway we have the yeah. buses so people don't do exercise, just mm -hmm. to eat. Yep. They don't burn their calories, just yep. to eat the calorie. That's yeah. terrible. Now, maybe a few decades later, we were facing a very severe healthy problem. I mean, U.S. is going through it now. Yeah. And, and China's looking at the U.S. and being like, maybe I'll do the same thing. And that's a terrible idea. Yes. We you have the, diabetes, uh, the the obesity problem yeah. to just follow the America, I yeah. think. It's more. the same shit. Yes. But to be fair, I think it's also everyone enjoys the American food. Cause it's so delicious yes. and everyone's like, I want burger fries. Why not? Yes. yes those and are high calorie food. That's a mistake. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. a mistake. <laughs> you know, I used to be a vegetarian for a year. I, yeah, I was, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Because I attended to the, uh, vegan group before in order to study English because yeah. there's so many. The oh, with Dylan. Group. Yeah. Dylan, Dylan, yeah. And Alisa. Yeah. yeah. You know, actually Dylan in introduced me to play board game with you guys 2018 oh. because I told him that I really want to communicate with foreigners yeah. at the moment. Mm -hmm. And he brought me to the cactus. Yes, yeah. I remember the first 2018 in the May, the first mm -hmm. time I went to the cactus. And I think I feel like that uh, uh, we need to eat a little bit of meat. Yeah. Because since I, I, I was doing a lot of exercise, I think that I was not that powerful mm -hmm. when I played badminton. Yeah. 
So balance the diet is very it's important. Super important. It's I important. Agree. Yeah, I mean, I understand that Dylan loves his vegan group and all that, and I think it's very difficult to balance that. And it's very hard to be vegan in in China. Yes, yes, I I was suffering because when I when I hang out, eat out with my friends, yeah, they think I'm a weirdo that yeah. they don't eat the meat. Exactly. Yes. Also, it's fun because our Chinese culture, you know, put every a little bit of meat into every in dish is yep. So it's very difficult. I only eat the like uh, fancy chow dan. Yeah. Mm. You can't live yes. on that. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. Also, I remember I went to the blind date once. Mm -hmm. That the girl thought that I'm, I'm a weirdo. Of course. If you, I ordered the, I ordered the several beef and the lamb for the other girl, but he asked me to eat with him, uh, with, with, with her, her together. Yeah. I said that I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. <laughs> he said that you are then weirdo. Why did you order this? I, I said I ordered this for you. Yeah. And he, she said that I will never eat it with you. Ever again. Ever again. Yeah. <laughs> that hurt, hurt me a lot at the moment. Noodles. Hurt Let me tell you, if I was a girl, I would tell you the same thing. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Because let's think about it from a very, uh, I guess, from a very uh, human standpoint. If I'm a girl and you had just said you were playing badminton and you don't think you are as strong. I want a strong man. Like I want someone that eats meat and is strong. Yes. If you're telling me that you don't <laughs> eat meat and you're not being able to even hit the badminton, yeah, then, the then what am I doing? Yeah. Right? Like I want to. I want a strong guy to back me up. Yes. So yes, yes. yes. I think the meat's a little bit important. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. We're chop. We're chopped all at time. Okay. Um, I have one more question for you before we go. Okay. Um, what's the biggest change in Shanghai that you think if you could remove that change and move it back to when you were a kid, what would you change? Uh, if I, if I could change, I back want to when you were a kid, back one I thing. Want, I want the government to keep a more historical buildings, typical Shikoman building. Mm, I like that. Why? Because our Shanghainese have homesick now. Mm. This is not the Shanghai, what it was. This is not the Shanghai because we, when we walk into the Longtang Shi Kuman building, we will, it will remind our childhood. I grew up from those kind of buildings. Yeah. But now we don't see because after the pandemic, after the lockdown, because we share the kitchen in mm -hmm. the older building, government is accelerated to, to tear down those older buildings. Yeah. So I, sometimes, you know, I even cannot find any Shanghai, Shanghai symbol, Shanghai flavor in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. We have some homesick for sure. Yeah. My generation. Mm -hmm. But do you think that if, the government kept the Shikumen buildings, it would even be Shanghai people living there. I think they would, they, those buildings would be filled with like foreigners, with like other people uh, living I mean, they keep the buildings like a commercial, old town like a Zhu Jia Jiao, Qing ah. just like the open some stores like a historical street. Yeah. Now, no, so many old, uh, so many fake towns, it's just a newly built building that's not authentic. That's not our Shanghai. Building. I hate that. <laughs> Let me tell you, I hate that more than. <laughs> that's one of my least favorite parts of China, is fake old. Yeah, is fake old. Like, oh, <laughs> why? Artificial. Like, just give me the real old. And also very identical. Yeah. All, nowadays, all the old towns are very identical. No, no feature. Yeah, it bothers me so much because, I know that there is real old things in yeah. China. Yes, but you, you've taken them all away. Yes, if you go to the Chengdu Quan Jai Quan Jai yeah, they have they have the same stops as the Shanghai Zhu Jia Jiao. I know, it bothers me because yes. I know that there is actual history, yes. and you're taking away all the actual history, yes, and yes. then giving me fake history. Yes, that's why I filmed a lot in the past several months because government is going to tear down the ninth district. district. Do you know the Lao Ximen, yeah. right? This is the old. That's where I work. Yeah, this yeah. is the old residential area in Shanghai, but it, it's, it's one of my favorite extinct. parts. It, it, yeah. it, it's do you know the Menghua Jie? Yes. I this, is a, this is a typical older Shanghai building. Yeah. It's like a living fossil there. I but know. the government is going to destroy it in the future. But mm -hmm. some of the celebrities' buildings will be preserved, maybe. A few. A I few, mean, but no atmosphere. Yeah. I remember my favorite area in Shanghai used to be Xiangnanmen. That yeah. entire area yes. used to be we, one of my favorites. We used to have the city wall and the city mode at yeah. that moment. I just, uh, it's it, all gone. Yeah, the, 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 the center of the Shanghai used to be the Chen Huang. Uh, no. The Yu, Yu Garden oh, is yeah. the Yu Garden. Ah, Chen Hua Miao, same thing. Yeah, Chen Hua, Chen Hua yeah. Miao. But the, the, the full of the architecture, the fake buildings around yeah. Chen Hua Miao. I, I think that the tea, the tea tower was the real. In the I think that one's still real. Yeah, Everything else has, is fake. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And that bothers me. Like, yes. 
it used to be very cool. I understand that you want to make it safer, right? Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of the old buildings are falling down. Yes. If it, you don't rebuild it or reinforce it, yes. then maybe it's not safe for tourists. Yes. But you want to try some to keep also, as also, much as you but can. But also some old towns are redecorated as a new, new yeah. town. That is not a good. But yeah. like a Xi Tang and the, I think the Wu Zhen uh, did a very good job. They just oh, yeah. uh, re uh, just the uh, redecorated older town as an older town. Mm -hmm. Don't don't paint it like a new building. Yeah, that is that's good. That to me, I, I don't understand why a country with so much history doesn't give me real history. Yeah, you know, sometimes there's so all, much. Of yeah, it. sometimes all Chinese say if you want to see the Chinese history, you, you are supposed to go to the Japan, go to the Taiwan. Sometimes they say they yeah. preserve the heritage well then I more than Shang and then mainland China. You know what? You know what I, I told my friend? Um, I don't know a single mainland Chinese person that knows how to use chopsticks correctly. Every person uses chopsticks. Yeah. They cross. <laughs> yes, and I'm like, where did you learn this? Because I grew up. Let me tell I I don't know if you know this story. We used to have to pick up coins with your chopsticks. Oh, really? Before you can eat. Oh, really? And so my parents would... Uh, they would they would laugh at us. They would be like, oh, yes. you, "Can you pick this up? No, no, you can't eat. Good luck." And in the older times, the family has the special rules: so how to sit down, how to stand, how to talk to yeah. the elders. grandparents, yeah. elders. But now, you know, even I think the children can hit their their spank their I grandparents. Hope not. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't like it. I don't understand that either. I think there still have to be rules. Yes. And if these kids are coming up with no manners, I think there's eventually there's going to be a big problem yeah i also i was not allowed to speak hybrid language when i was child my grandpa was not either uh -huh. either you speak mandarin or shanghai dialect yeah. not, the, not a mix not, not mixed no 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 mm -hmm. but do you think that's right like i think yes that's right i think all languages are kind of a mix though right yeah, like maybe i'm american you know, you know yesterday i i was eating at the fast restaurant yeah i i, I noticed that the mother and the, his her son were talking to each other, but the mother spoke Shanghai dialect. Uh -huh. Her son spoke Mandarin. Uh -huh. This is a very interesting phenomenon. We've done that too. Yeah, my family, really? yeah, my family, my mom would speak to me in Chinese, and oh. then my sister and I would respond in English. That happens. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. You know, and <laughs> this it's is an interesting phenomenon. It's not good. I think the kids do have to learn their mother language. Yes. Preserve that culture. Yes. It, to me, that's super important. Because otherwise you just lose it. Yeah, but nowadays the government will try to preserve our heritage, our language, but it's too late. It's too late. Because it's way too late. Yeah, it's too late. People don't, yeah. don't even know how to speak. Yeah. Too late. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, we're about time. Um, okay. Anything that you want to say that you hope can happen, you know, in the future for Shanghai? Maybe try to keep more Shanghainese, uh, something like that. Uh, in the future, I hope that uh, marriage is not that expensive. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the mother-in-law will be not that picky. Yeah. And the uh, noodles we'll, can get married. Yeah, get married to help the human race going. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'll we'll be facing the aging yep. aging society problem for mm -hmm. sure, right? Yeah. Okay, that's a good place to stop. All right. Bye, okay. everyone. Bye, bye. Thank you. That was great. <laughs>